Hi folks, welcome back to the channel and thanks for tuning in. Taking high quality images of objects in deep space unfortunately isn't as easy as just taking a camera, attaching it to a telescope and pressing a shutter button. Deep Sky Astrophotography does come with its fair share of challenges, but fortunately ZWO recently released this ASI 2600MC Air smart camera to make our lives as astrophotographers a little bit easier. So in this video I'm going to explain to you what this camera is all about, how it can simplify your astrophotography routine, and of course we're going to test out this camera by taking some pictures of the Orion Nebula in the winter sky right here from my rooftop in the city. I'm Vido Willemans, you're watching Vido's Astro Forum, let's go! Before discussing this smart camera in detail, let's take a step back and look at some of the major challenges we face when engaging in deep sky astrophotography. To capture stunning deep space images, you need a telescope and a dedicated camera, but that's just the beginning. Your telescope has to accurately track celestial objects as they move across the night sky due to Earth's rotation. That means you need a computerized telescope mount that can precisely track celestial objects over time to capture long exposure photos of objects in the night sky. Now here's the first catch. Many telescope mounts aren't perfect in their tracking. Even when you align your telescope mount exactly to the celestial pole, Tiny mechanical imperfections in the mount can cause tracking errors, which result in blurry photos when taking multi-minute exposures. To fix this, astrophotographers often use an extra guide scope and a guide camera. This is a smaller telescope with a camera attached to the main setup that monitors the star's positions in real time. If the mount starts to drift, the guide camera detects the error and sends small corrections to the telescope mount to keep the stars in the same position. This is called auto-guiding and it's essential for capturing sharp, long exposure images of deep space objects. But even auto-guiding is only part of the total equation. To actually run a successful imaging session, you're also going to need a computer with astrophotography software to control your astrophotography gear, like your main camera, your guide camera, your telescope mount and more. And that's where things can get really complicated. More hardware means more cables, power sources and software configurations, which can make deep sky astrophotography time consuming and sometimes frustrating. Believe me, I've been there. And that's where the ASI 2600MC Air comes in. ZWO tried to integrate an entire imaging system into one single smart camera. So of course this is an astrophotography camera based on the popular ASI 2600MC Pro, but it also has a guiding sensor to keep your telescope mount exactly pointed at the objects you're trying to image, and it has an ASI Air on board, meaning you can wirelessly control your astrophotography gear using your smartphone or your tablet um, over Wi-Fi without the need for any additional mini PC or laptop. Sounds pretty good, doesn't it? Before we dive into my real-life testing, let's take a closer look at some of the key features of the ASI 2600MC Air smart camera. This camera comes with a built-in 2-megapixel guide sensor and a focusing knob, allowing you to fine-tune the focus. This means that guiding happens at the telescope's native focal length, much like an off-axis guiding system, only without the added complexity of setting one up. Next, the camera features a built-in Wi-Fi, enabling you to wirelessly control your entire astrophotography rig using the ZWO ASI Air app on your smartphone or tablet. From focusing and polar alignments to guiding and imaging, everything can be managed in the app. The camera features the popular Sony IMX571 sensor, offering a stunning 26 megapixel resolution with 3.76 micron pixels. This is perfect for capturing larger celestial objects. With a maximum quantum efficiency of 91%, it's designed to minimize bloated stars, while the IR cut filter prevents magenta halos and ensures accurate color reproduction of deep sky objects. Lastly, the Pelche cooler can cool the imaging sensor down by up to minus 35 degrees Celsius below ambient temperature, which drastically reduces thermal noise during long exposures. It also includes a built-in dew heater to keep the sensor clear on humid nights. 
So my weather app predicts clear skies tonight. Well, <laughs> let's hope for the best. So in my usual setup, I run at least three USB cables from my main camera, my guide camera and my telescope mount to an ASI Air Plus. With the ASI 2600MC Air, the guide sensor and the ASI Air are already built in, which eliminates the need for a guide scope and the ASI Air Plus. The result is a much cleaner, more streamlined setup with far less cables. The camera also features four USB ports and three power outputs. Connecting the ASI 2600MC Air to my FF80 telescope was pretty straightforward. The camera has a 54mm opening and ZWO does provide an extra M54 to M48 adapter for those telescopes that may have a smaller opening. I also put my 2-inch electronic filter wheel in front of the camera and I did notice that the guide sensor ended up near the edge of the opening, so some of the light is probably blocked and I was curious to find out if that would cause any issues in terms of guiding. CWO also offers an optional M54 filter drawer, which could be a useful alternative. So I connected my telescope mount and filter wheel to the camera using two USB cables. To power the camera, I used the 12 volt output on my ZWO AM5 telescope mount and I powered the telescope mount itself using an external battery. My testing nights were pretty humid, so I added the dew heater to the telescope which I powered using the camera. After powering on the camera, I saw the Wi-Fi signal of the camera on my smartphone and upon connecting to the ASI Air app, the app showed me a firmware update. I ran the update and after that the ASI Air app recognized all my Astro gear. As I already have an ASI Air Plus, I was already familiar with the software and I started to perform my usual workflow which included focusing, polar alignment, slewing to an object, in this case the Orion Nebula, and uh, starting with an imaging plan. For a detailed explanation on how to use the ASI Air app, check out my link to another video in the description below. I was particularly curious about the guiding performance of the camera. With the filter wheel blocking some of the light, I had to boost the gain level to detect the stars at a 1 second interval. Additionally, I set the focal length of the guide scope to match the native focal length of my main scope, which was 600mm. Using the focusing knob on the camera, I fine-tuned the focus of the guide sensor and initiated auto-guiding. The guiding calibration worked smoothly and the camera began its multi-star auto-guiding routine. I started capturing 3-minute exposures of the Orion Nebula without using any filter. This setup performed well and over multiple hours, the guiding consistently stayed within one arc second actually ranging between 0.5 and 0.8 arc seconds in both RA and DEC. This was more than sufficient to produce sharp photos with round stars in my multi-minute exposures of the Orion Nebula. When I switched to my 2-inch 7 nanometer H-alpha filter, I did encounter an issue. The filter restricted too much light for the guide sensor to track the stars at 1 second intervals. While I could increase the exposure to 5 seconds, that wasn't an efficient solution. So, out of curiosity, I reattached my old guide scope to my setup and the ASI 2600MC Air immediately recognized the guide camera. After updating the focal length to match my guide scope, I was able to guide normally again. For those advanced users who are watching, this test shows that the ASI 2600MC Air can also work seamlessly with a separate guide scope and guide camera, which may be good to know if you have those 3 nanometer narrowband filters. Hi folks, let me show you some detailed images I took with the ASI 2600MC Air in PixInsight, but before I do so, I just wanted to make clear that I'm not getting any money from ZWO, so this is not a sponsored video. You're just hearing my honest opinion about every astrophotography product I review actually on my channel. And um, as the channel grows, I do get some invitations from vendors who do want to pay me uh, to do a scripted video for their astrophotography products. And I always turn them down because it helps me sleep better at night. So 
You will find some affiliate links in the video description below to reliable vendors across the USA, the EU, and worldwide. If you click that link, you will pay exactly the same price, uh, but I will get a very small percentage of the profit and I will reinvest that money into buying and testing other astrophotography gear. Um, yeah, I just wanted to get that out there. And uh, yeah, if you like the channel, give the channel a like, subscribe to the channel or join the channel. It really helps me to grow and let's look at the pictures. For those new to astrophotography, let me start by showing you what a single three minute image looks like. As you can see, it's very dark with only a few stars visible. If I apply an auto stretch, it reveals all the data within this single image. At this point you might wonder, where are the colors? Well, they are there, but to bring them out, you need to debayer the image. Over the course of two nights, I captured 98 three-minute images of the Orion Nebula. Here is a short time-lapse of all the 98 images. You'll notice that imaging conditions weren't ideal. Some images are much brighter than others, likely due to passing hazy clouds during the three-minute exposures. I used a weighted batch pre-processing script in PixInsight to stack the 98 images, giving me nearly 5 hours of data. The stacked image is still quite dark, but if I zoom in, you can see colors in the core of the Orion Nebula. Applying an auto stretch again reveals a lot of greenish muck. That's all the artificial light pollution from the nearby football club and my Bortle Class 8 city skies. I'm in one of the most light polluted regions in the world. I've stopped using light pollution filters recently because tools like Rexpert and Dynamic Background Extraction have gotten very good at removing light pollution during post-processing. Using Rexpert, which is a free add-on for PixInsight, I extracted the light pollution and the result is a much cleaner preview of the Orion Nebula. Looking at the edges of the image, you can see that the stars are almost perfectly round, even at the corners. This tells me that the ASI 2600 MC Air did a good job guiding during the 3 minute exposures. For my more advanced astro friends, I also measured the eccentricity of the stars across the 98 images, and all these pictures ranged between 0.25 and 0.6, which I find a very good result given that my telescope has a 600mm focal length. If you like a detailed tutorial on processing astrophotos in PixInsight, check out the link in the video description. Now, let me show you the final image and share my thoughts on the ASI 2600 MC Air. <laughs>